In this week's Fresco Tip Friday, I'm gonna show you how to make a repeating pattern. To do this, I'm gonna use some fan art I made for the new Zelda Tears of the Kingdom game. To be honest, I haven't played a Zelda game since Ocarina of Time many, many years ago, back when I was in high school. But I really loved that game, and I sort of got excited seeing all this new stuff for the new game. But I don't know if I have the time to play a video game. Let me know in the comments if you think I need to make some time to play this Zelda game, because I know a lot of people that I really like, a lot of good friends, We're really into one of the last Zelda games too, so I don't even know what the console is. Is it Nintendo Switch? Is that the thing where it's like handheld, but then it's also on the TV? Is that even how it works? Listen, I'm out of the loop here. One of my earliest memories as a child was playing The Legend of Zelda on the regular Nintendo, and that was that like metallic gold cartridge. That was very cool. But I've played Zelda on all different kinds of systems. Anyway, I was always a big fan of Zelda, specifically because of that main character Link. I think just the fact that I remember his name is proof enough. But it's making me realize that I sort of have a, a, a type for characters that I'm really into. Let me see if you can figure it out. Just like huge characters in my life, characters that I was obsessed with growing up. Robin Hood, Link from Zelda, Peter Pan? What do they have in common? That's right, a pointy green hat. That can't be what I'm into. Maybe I need a pointy green hat. All right, enough about my weird childhood obsessions. Let's head over to my iPad and make a sweet repeating pattern. Okay, so I have my fresco document open with all my little illustrations here. And when you're gonna make a pattern, you wanna make sure that all of the elements that will make up the pattern are on separate layers so that you have control over them in the next step. So as you can see here, I have like a variety of different elements and like different sizes. This is helpful when you're making a pattern because if you have some things that are small or like skinny or curved or something like that, you can use those to sort of fill in the extra spaces that may be left from where things don't sort of fit together nicely. I like to sort of have some like main elements and then some like filler stuff to go into those weird little spots. So like my main elements are clearly Link and Ganon and the Master Sword. And then these other little elements I sort of treating as filler. So it is this like Triforce thing and then Broken Arrow. That's sort of a really useful thing for a pattern just because it's really skinny and it can fit in weird spots but it can sort of you know fill in the composition nicely. And then I got this little Triforce with a single tear for the kingdom. And then this snake thing that was on Link's shield in one of the uh, pieces of art from the game that I saw released. I was actually thinking about doing a video about how I sort of created these in my own style and like my process for that kind of thing. So if you would be interested in seeing that type of video, let me know in the comments. So again, you wanna make sure all of your items are on separate layers. So they are just individual little things. So for example, Link is on his own layer, so I can toggle that on and off. So when you have everything all ready to go, what you're gonna do is click on the share export button at the top or publish an export, just like you would for an animation or just saving an image. And you're gonna choose publish and export, the first one at the top. And then over here on the side, you will see capture pattern. So this is gonna open Adobe Capture. If you don't have Adobe Capture, you may have to download it, but that may just prompt you to download it anyway. Adobe Capture is a free app you don't have to pay for it. And it's a really cool app and has a lot of amazing features besides just doing this. I don't know, maybe I'll make a video about all the cool things you can do with Fresco with Adobe Capture. If you wanna see that, let me know in the comments because uh, Capture is pretty amazing. But anyway, we're gonna click on Capture Pattern and you're gonna get this dialog box and it's gonna show you all of your different layers in your document. So this is why it was important to have them on separate layers. So you're gonna select all the ones that you want. And then once you have them all selected, you'll go ahead and hit Done. And then you've got this sort of pattern maker situation going on. By default, it's just gonna choose four random things from the list of things that you selected, but we can control that and swap these out. So the first thing that I like to do is get my main items down first and then add in the fillers after that. To do that, I'm gonna come over here to this little tool on the side with the shapes and you'll see all of our different layers populated in this menu. First thing I want to do is swap out these like filler items like the Triforce and the Tear Force. I'm going to come in here and grab Ganon and drag it onto this Tear Triforce and then I'm going to swap out this Triforce with the Dragon Snake thing and then we'll go and add these other things after the fact. So the next step is to come over to your settings on the right side. And here we're gonna change this from snap to grid to freeform grid. So we hit freeform grid. This is gonna give us a lot more flexibility in the amount of items that we can have in our pattern and where they can be. At this point, I'm just gonna start arranging my main elements and then get them in a sort of position that I 
feel happy with. So I think I'm gonna build the pattern around Link because he's sort of like the main focus. So you just click and hold and you can move your objects and you'll see that it's moving all across your screen. So this area that's lighter in transparency, that's your preview of like the repeating pattern. So what we're building here is a tile and then this outer area is that tile repeating. And you can control how dark or how light that is with this little slider bar over here. So I like to keep it pretty light so I can see it, but it's not affecting me too much. So now that I got Ganon out of the way, I'm gonna take Link, move him down, scale him up a little bit, maybe rotate it a little bit and just sort of like loosely place it for now. And then you can come back in, maybe move Ganon up here, kind of like how that bottom line of his beard sort of matches that line. I like sort of making things fit together nicely within the negative space like that to sort of make it all work together. So the next thing I'm gonna focus on is the master sword because that is very important. I'm gonna move this over. I'm gonna rotate it like this and then just like scale it up and then try to find like a, I don't know, a comfortable spot where it's not overlapping the other things. So I'm trying to get it to fit sort of in between here. You, you can like see all the spots where it's like interacting with things. So I think that's fairly okay. We could come in and like rotate Link a little bit and you can sort of fine tune these things to see if you can get them to line up nicely. So now let's deal with this snake dragon thing. I don't actually know what it is. So with this, I'm thinking we can put it like up here and that sort of, I don't know, wraps nicely around Link's head. So I think that's looking pretty good, but I am noticing now that this master sword is touching Ganon's head. And although I know the goal is to put that master sword right through his head, that's a little gross. I don't want it to be touching because it'll cause like a weird little visual tangent. So I think maybe I'll push this over a little bit so there's a nice comfortable breathing room between the two. And now let's go in and grab our other filler items. So I'm going to come over to this little shape tool on the side. And this is where we can just grab what we want and drag it into our composition. I'll grab the Triforce because this is sort of a big element and then it's just gonna place pretty big here. And what we'll do is just like scale it down and then find a place for it. So I'm thinking maybe over here, we can rotate that. Let's get the uh, arrows. Okay, and let's grab the other end of the broken arrow, drag that in. I think because this is the other end of the arrow, I wanna sort of match the uh, sizing to the rest of the arrow. Okay, and then what else do we have? Oh yeah, the uh, tiers of the Triforce. Okay, I think that's pretty good. There's just this like little spot over here that I think could use something. So maybe we'll go ahead and bring in another arrow. Okay, cool, I think this is looking pretty good. At this point, I'll just do a little bit of like fine tuning, so I think we can rotate Ganon's head a little bit, scale it up just a, a skoosh, a skosh. What's a skosh? Make sure nothing's touching. And then what I like to do is turn off the shape at this point, or sometimes earlier, and that sort of helps me visualize this whole thing. Then you can also turn that preview all the way up so you can get a feel for the whole pattern. I think this is well balanced. There's no big empty spaces. I think it flows together nicely. So what we'll do now is we will hit save and this is gonna generate a pattern tile for us. So we can go ahead and name this Zelda done and then hit save. You can choose wherever you want to save it. I'm saving it to my Creative Cloud library. And then if we click over here on my library, you will see our pattern tile. And here we have infinity Zelda pattern. So at this point, we can do a lot of different things. We can export this as a pattern tile. So if you wanted to like use this for a repeating pattern for whatever, if you want to like upload it to something like Spoonflower or Redbubble, whatever you want to do, um, you could do a pattern tile that would automatically tile however you want it there. You could also export it as an SVG. You can also save it to your camera roll and that'll just make like a nice sample of the pattern like this. If you wanted to use it for like a wallpaper or something like that, it's like already sized nicely. And here you can also decide now that you see it, maybe you want to edit it a little bit so you can click on edit and it'll open back up in capture. And you could just like come in here and fine tune whatever you needed to do and then hit save and it would update. In addition, you can also click open in and you can open it in Illustrator or Photoshop. 
and then you can use it as a pattern tile there as well. Lots of possibilities, lots of fun. Are you excited to go make a pattern? First time I made a repeating pattern, I was sort of obsessed. It's It feels like magic. You have like a couple little random drawings and then all of a sudden, boom, just infinity. I made so many patterns once I learned how to do them and it was a lot more tedious back then. With this feature in Adobe Fresco, it's so easy and so fast you can make patterns in just a few minutes. It's crazy. If you make some patterns and you post them on social media, don't forget to tag me at Chris Piasek. All right, good talk. I'll see you Tuesday and Friday and, and forever. At least that's the plan. Should I put my green hat back on? Bye. Good talk.